Anvil Aerospace. Now, Anvil Aerospace, I think, originally was envisioned as the new kid on the block coming to kick Aegis out of their, uh, you know, their long-standing military contracts with some new cutting-edge tech. But in the interim, in in over the last seven years of game development, uh, Anvil has fallen behind somewhat. They they're not low tech they're not crappy they're not weak they've just as other manufacturers have stepped into the medium fighter arena and we're going to start off with the hornets um they've all come with gimmicks you know it's often one of the things that uh, game designers do when they kind of bring something new to an established area they kind of attach a gimmick to it it's you know it's a well-trodden path and so yeah, we're going to start off with the Hornets, and we're going to talk about the Hornets specifically and what I think of them. The Hornets aren't bad fighters. I don't think that they are bad fighters. I mean, certainly every fighter in Star Citizen is going to have its strengths and its weaknesses, and one of the big determining factors in the end is going to be the pilot who knows how to best exploit their strengths and protect themselves from their weaknesses. And... I think that the Hornets are going to be solid fighters, though compared to the more gimmicky fighters out there, maybe a little bit ho-hum. But overall, as a fighter, I think that the Hornets are pretty solid. Now rounding out Anvil's line of fighters is of course the light fighter, the Anvil Arrow, which is supposed to be a very excellent fighter, though not quite doing the best right now as far as I understand. And we have the Anvil Hawk, which is a fighter slash bounty hunter ship. Now, this, of course, held a lot of promise initially, but I have since gotten rid of it. I frankly did not enjoy it as a fighter whatsoever. Um, maybe that'll change once bounty hunting is in the game. Moving on from fighters to something that is meant to kill fighters. The Anvil Ballista. Now, the Ballista is uh, kind of like a two-piece APC, though it's all connected. I guess you would say it's an articulated uh, armored vehicle with uh, missiles for shooting down aircraft that are attacking ground installations or your forces on the ground. This has become something that is relevant to Star Citizen nowadays as we do spend a lot of time on the ground at various moons and whatnot, so this would be a great thing to kind of have along to protect your ground forces from marauding, you know, invaders from space. The problem is, is that currently <laughs> there's nothing that can carry it to its destination. So you can go to various ground locations. You can pull it out. You can drive it around. You can shoot at stuff. But using it for missions and using it for any other ground activities is currently off the table and will remain off the table until the Hercules or what is it the Crusader Industries Hercules Starlifter is completed and in the game because it's the probably the first ship that's actually going to be able to deliver this ship to or this vehicle to any place of consequence ideally there was actually an opening in the anvil line that could have maybe with some modification have accomplished this but Unfortunately, it didn't, and I'm talking, of course, about the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is Anvil's own troop delivery transport. It's a very big ship, as you can see, and it even has cargo space now. You're welcome, by the way. Though, oddly enough, Anvil actually built a large-scale combat transport that can't carry their ground combat vehicle into combat. It's kind of a weird thing. But it does come with a lot of features. Now, I have played with this ship extensively through members of my org who have it. And it is a ship that on multiple occasions, I have to admit to the fact that I have considered. It is probably one of the stronger offerings from Anvil currently. And it is a ship that you're going to get a lot of use of. You can't really carry the ballista. Bit of a question mark there. But you can carry other smaller vehicles so it does have its use and you can now use that space as cargo space once again you're welcome 
but if you look at this combat area you can see that you have these doors that seal you know the negative outside environmental effects away from your troops so when they're getting ready for combat and they're putting on their combat armor they will be protected from whatever environment you choose to drop them into combat you know, or whatever environment you choose to drop them into combat in it's a very very intelligent design very forward thinking now up here is where you see the crew area this is where the people who operate the ship live and breathe the pilot station up front you got a bathroom for you know doing bathroom things and you got all your beds here so all the operators of the vessel can basically kind of sleep within their ship now there is one slight problem which is unfortunately they don't enjoy the same protection as the troops so as soon as someone opens up the door unless they all have space helmets on 24 7 and spacesuits they are going to asphyxiate and die which kind of raises the question of why is there a bathroom if you're gonna have to walk around wearing a spacesuit all the time i mean i don't know i don't want to really picture how that's gonna work but overall this i would say is probably one of the strongest offerings from anvil currently that best reflects the current realities of star citizens so if you're looking to you know drop troops onto the surface of a planet carry a little cargo or maybe deliver some smaller vehicles uh this is a pretty damn solid ship and it apparently has some pretty decent legs and guess what despite the way it looks the cockpit view in this thing is not that bad now this was something that initially with this ship and a couple of the other anvil ships i made fun of because the cockpit view all these panels used to come up to halfway in the screen and that has since been eliminated and you even have a little window here so you can see the ground beneath you an, an amazing innovation an amazing innovation to help you land the ship i would honestly say that despite the uh, murderous intent that it aims towards its crew the people who operate it it's a very solid ship and i do not think that this is money ill spent when you think about the realities of star citizen and what star citizen has become this is definitely a ship that is built for those realities whereas some of the older ships were built for a different reality anyways moving on the hurricane the Hurricane is a fighter that Anvil in inherited from an older and now defunct manufacturer. I think that this ship still holds a little bit of promise in attacking larger vessels, you know, things like Connie's and whatnot, where it can kind of play the evasion game while its big turret with its four size threes does the work, but th that remains to be seen. The Terrapin. I remember earlier when I was talking about cockpit views and the Terrapin was one of the prime offenders in this area. Once again, all the panels in the cockpit came up to basically the mid-level of the screen, which was completely ridiculous. And it appears that CIG has indeed listened here as well. Look at this. It's beautiful. This is awesome. I mean... 3,000 years in the future, or no, it's not 3,000 years in the future, 1,000 years in the future, and they finally figured out booster seats. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, you know, overall, this is a science and exploration ship, but it's also, a, I guess, a little bit of a surveillance vessel as well. It can kind of stealth itself up to a certain degree and scan various areas. Something that really doesn't come into play right now but in the future, this could actually be a very valuable ship to have around. Something to kind of stick your nose in where it doesn't belong and check things out. So I would say that that's a ship that right now, not so great. But looking into the future, possibly. Possibly a very interesting ship. Depends on what comes online and how. Next up, we have the Pisces. The shuttle pod one that comes with anvil's probably best offering currently which is the carrot but we'll get to that ship in a second because sadly 
even in its current state, it is not in the showroom. I, you know what? I kind of like the idea behind it, but the realities of travel in Star Citizen right now, as far as like a shuttle to just deliver things down to the surface of the planet, unless there are going to be atmosf adverse ad atmospheric conditions that don't allow for a larger ship to land, but a smaller ship to land, possibly you could see some use out of that. Though I think that it'll probably through its adaptations be able to carry other various systems within it allowing it to do other tasks though i don't think they've been too specific on that it may see some value in that area but as a shuttle lander kind of like star trek under normal conditions i don't think you're probably going to get that much use out of it now there are a number of anvil ships that are missing from the showroom floor and we're kind of we're going to go over them. Now, one of them, obvious, not finished yet, though I think even in its current state, players would have appreciated at least seeing the exterior of it, the Anvil Carrick. Now, the Carrick, of course, is the science and exploration vehicle, also military. Um, it carries the Pisces up in its back and down in the front there. That is a loading area. You can go back and you can watch the footage from Citizen Con showing you driving a vehicle up into this ship. Though, sadly, can't carry a ballista either. Just saying. Weird how they designed a ground vehicle that none of their ships that can carry ground vehicles can carry. Odd, isn't it? Um... I think that the Carrick currently is probably the strongest offering from my point of view from the entire Anvil line of ships. It receives a lot of attention from the community, which in turn translates to more intention for, or attention from CIG, which generally in most cases only benefits the ship. They, you know, they see it being a high, you know, a high earner a high profile ship that gets a lot of people excited they're going to put more effort into it to make sure it lives up to that hype and lives up to that excitement and so i think that the carrick is uh at the stage that it has come into the game it is a ship that is benefiting from the most learning experiences and mistakes that were made with other ships of which there have been so many um and frankly I think that the owners who have waited so long for this ship, when they do get it, TBD, but February-ish, I, I understand, they are going to be very happy with the ship that they purchased. It is probably going to be one of the best adapted larger ships to life in the current reality of the PU. And I think that it's going to see a lot of practical use. Unlike other ships of its size and class, I think that it is a real solid standout. And so even though it has seen a number of price increases since the, its glory days of what? What was the first price on this? $325? And I think it's up in like the 500 range now. Um, it's still a great ship. It's still an awesome ship. Soloable? Question mark. But I think that it is going to be a very good ship for a group of players to get together with and explore the Star Citizen universe. On to the Forgotten. And which Forgotten ships? Well, the Crucible. Now, the Crucible is unique, and this is kind of a fun ship, and I'd like to draw your attention to this. This is a game that you can play whenever you're watching a CIG live broadcast and someone mentions the Crucible. Watch the CIG person who is answering the question regarding the Crucible because you will see the very telling moment last sometimes maybe two to three seconds where they actually look up and try to remember what the Crucible was. So this is a ship going all the way back to 2014, 2015. It re received a lot of positive reviews, myself included. We all really liked it. It's meant as a repair vessel for larger ships like capital ships and whatnot. And it could possibly carry a fighter or two within it as well. There was a lot of hope attached to the ship a lot of excitement i think that originally this was going to play a prominent role in some parts of squadron 42 
which were later dropped. And so as they were dropped, so was the ship. In the future, in a fully fleshed out universe with large capital ships running around, this could be a very handy thing to have around. Though its uses may be somewhat... It's not going to be something that you need all the time, but when you need it, it's going to be really handy to have it, if you know what I mean. I, that's where I think that this ship is going to fit in. But right now, sadly, it sits amongst the forgotten ships, like the Genesis Starliner in Star Citizen. People go like, oh yeah, that thing. That's what this ship is. It's an oh yeah, that thing. So one day... In the future, it may possibly be a great ship to have, but right now, it's the ship that no one remembers. Speaking of ships that people forgot, yeah, the Gladiator. So, at one point, this thing was the darling of Arena Commander, and it is a flyable ship, though strangely, conspicuously absent from the Anvil Hall. I bet you if you were to ask someone from CIG why it's not there, they'd be like, oh, right. Oops. Sorry. We forgot that that thing was flyable. Uh, the Gladiator, yeah, was one time the darling of Arena Commander. You could load it up with a crap ton of missiles when missiles were overpowered, and you could just go around and just blast people out of existence with it, and it was no problem. Since that got nerfed, the ship itself has kind of fallen into relative obscurity. It has become a ship that when you see it in the persistent universe you're kind of like oh my god someone still owns that that's how you feel about it there were various promises that it could also use its you know missile bay as a cargo area and there you know maybe there'd be some development or some possibility that you could use it to salvage components off of ships that sort of flavor text that was added to it in the early days but since then none of that has really panned out and it seems to be overshadowed by ships like the Harbinger and the Retaliator to the point where a lot of people just look at it and say, what's the point? And so, though it was a ship that in the early days held a lot of promise, currently it is kind of, kind of ho-hum and forgotten. I mean, you look at the showcase of all the current Anvil ships that are flyable right here on the showroom floor, and they forgot to put it here. I mean, that kind of says it all for that ship. Anyways, thou, uh, those are my thoughts on the Anvil lineup of ships. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank, you, thank you for watching. So, so, so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.